In this video, I am going to show you the difference between Future Builder and Stream Builder. So here I have the code for this app. So this is a shopping list app. Here you can see a list of items. So these are the items of a shopping list. Now in the code you can see that we have a scaffold and to the body of the scaffold we are passing the value returned by this function build future builder. So here I have created two widgets. One is build future builder that returns a future builder and another named build stream builder which returns a stream builder so for the purpose of demonstration i'll call build future builder once and i'll show you what happens how does it react when we add a new item to the database and then i'll call this function stream builder once and then again i'll show you by adding a new item to the database and i'll show you the difference so here is the database that we have on cloud firestore so we are using firebase as the backend and now let us try to add a new item here in this database so this is a collection in cloud firestore data is stored in this way so there is a collection inside the collection we store the defined documents and each document represents one particular type of data one particular type of item of our app so in this case this is a list of shopping items so we have a collection named shopping list Inside this collection, we have different documents and each of this document represent one particular item of the shopping list. So here inside each of these documents, we have two fields, one called name that contains the name of the item and another called quantity which contains the quantity of the item to be purchased. Now let us add a new item here let's generate the id automatically and let's we have to specify the exact name of the field so this is name and then let's specify a value let us also add the quantity now save the changes now you notice that a new item has been added here in the database but we cannot see the change immediately on our ui on the list of our app is still displaying four items but we have five here in the database now if we close the app as we don't have any mechanism mechanism for refreshing this content if we close the app and open it again then the future will try to get the new data and here we can see all of the items now we can see the newly added item now let us go back to the code again and let's change this to a stream build. So we are back in Android Studio and here to the property body of the scaffold we were passing the value, the widget returned by this function build future builder. Now let's call build stream builder here as this function returns a stream builder. Now save the changes. Let me open the database again. And now let us try to make some changes here. Let's change the name of this item or let us try adding a new item. So let's click on this button here to add a new document and let's generate the ID automatically. Add the field name, add the value. Let's, let's add anything here. Let's add rice and then add a quantity. Now save this document. So here the item got added. We can see the new item on the database and as well as on the UI2, the item appeared automatically. So because Stream Builder is listening to the changes of this database, whenever something changes here, we get the update immediately and we accordingly we are displaying the item here. If you make changes to a particular document, that too will be reflected here immediately. For example, here we have this item and the name of the item is item. If we change it to something else, and notice here this, this name changes automatically. So this is the advantage of using a stream builder. So a stream builder listens to a stream and a stream provides the real time changes using which the stream builder can create the layout, update the layout automatically. 
Now let me show you the code of the stream builder as well as the future builder. So they look similar. So here we have a stream builder. This the constructor of this widget has a property called stream to which we have to pass an instance of the class stream. And then we have another parameter called builder to which we have to pass an implementation of a builder function. So this function gets a context and an instance of a class called async snapshot and we get the data and all other information related to the connection inside this instance uh, this instance of async snapshot class so we can check whether any error has occurred we can find the status of the connection and we can get the data that we are looking for itself inside this instance snapshot whenever something changes whenever new data arrives at the stream this builder function gets called again and accordingly the ui is updated if you take a look at this future builder you will find a similar syntax this time instead of stream we have a parameter called future and we have to pass an instance of the class future then we have the property builder to which we have to pass an implementation of a function which is similar to this one this function again is responsible for creating the layout that depends on the value of the stream of the future in this case so a stream is an active connection between the source of information and the consumer of information but future is a little dif different future is a one time request so you make a request for something and the api or the function gives you a future you can consider it to be an empty box with a promise that the data will be put into this future whenever it becomes available or in case of an error the error will be put into this future so we make make request for something we get a future and we wait for the data to arrive and the data arrives or the error arrives and we handle that accordingly but it does not listen to the real time changes now the next question is when to use a stream builder and when to use a future builder first of all to be able to use a stream builder you should have a stream so all the apis may not provide you a stream but considering you have a stream of the data as well as a future and you have the choice to use any of them then you have to decide whether to use a stream builder depending on your needs so whether you need to make changes to your ui whenever something changes on the data or if you do, if you don't need to make any changes on the ui whenever something changes then you should prefer using future builder 